Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name's Jono. Some time ago, I uh, featured a video whereby I showed you my first attempts at developing at home um, for many, many years. Um, since then, uh, I've changed my uh, technique somewhat. Um, the package that I used back then was a gr brilliant starter package. Um, it gave you exactly the right chemicals you needed to develop uh, one or two films. Um, everything was sort of measured out for you, so very little thinking involved, made it things nice and easy. Um, but it didn't prove to be very uh, cost effective because um, you were spending some money and then obviously it was done. You know, once you developed a couple of films, it was done. Um, it was just one developing session. Um, there's some newer products on the market and one of them, um, Cinestills DF96, um, seems to be the opposite of that. It seems to be a very uh, eco and cost effective way of developing uh, what they call a monobath. In other words, just one chemical for everything. Um, so I thought I'd give it a try and uh, see how it turns out. So let's waste no more time. Let's take a look. The film I'm going to be developing is this. This is the Alfred HP5 um, uh, black and white film 120 that um, I've shot in the Ashika A uh, camera that I showed you in a recent video. Um, so obviously this is all uh, taped up, uh, stop accidental exposure, uh, and it's ready to be developed. So this is the developing chemical I'm going to use, Sinistil's DF96, a monobath. In other words, it's just one chemical to do everything rather than having to have a developer and a fixer, etc, etc. Uh, it's just one bath does everything all in one go. You can buy it in pre-mixed liquid form, um, but the version I've got is slightly cheaper. It's in granular format and I need to uh, mix the two parts that they send you uh, with water and it makes up one litre, more than enough to to develop uh, two 35mm films in one go, or in this case, uh, one 120 film in one go. Okay, so time to get this mixed into uh, liquid form. So I've got some water here, uh, roughly 600 millilitres, which is what's recommended. And I'm just gonna take uh, sachet A, part A, and uh, obviously open it up and uh, get this poured in. Um, it's not great stuff in terms of getting it in your eyes, getting it on your skin, so please be careful. Might be better off wearing gloves and safety glasses, although I was a little a uh, little carefree here and didn't uh, didn't do that. But yeah, please do that. Also do this in a well-ventilated area um, because as I say, the fumes can be a little bit uh, toxic. We don't want uh, anybody being injured. Um, Pouring it in and mixing it up as much as possible. It goes cloudy to start with, but ideally you need to mix this well enough so that um, their solution goes clear and that everything has been dissolved into the water. I had a little problem with getting the last couple of bits and pieces dissolved, but uh, um, it didn't seem to cause me too much of a problem. So yeah, mixing all that in. And uh, Next, it's part B. Um, again, quite a heady smell off this. Please be careful. Uh, and obviously, in terms of splashing it on yourself, uh, please be careful about that. Um, but yeah, the, as I say, the solution does go a little bit cloudy um, to start with, but it should be clear by the time you're actually decanting this into your sort of final container for storage. I should point out, by the way, that I'm not using distilled water as is recommended. I'm just using tap water. I've seen people use both. And to be honest with you, I really can't tell the difference in the end result. So I think it really depends on tap water in your local area. But I think you'll be fine in most cases. So in it goes, stirring on the way. Trying to get as much of it as dissolved as possible. You shouldn't get much left over. I only had a, you know, the odd uh, grain perhaps uh, just wouldn't dissolve properly for me. What I ended up actually doing was um, straining uh, any solid material left off. Uh, it wasn't a huge amount, as I say, but uh, rather than it having it uh, in the developer and obviously you know causing problems with it, scratching film, etc. 
Um, so just making sure that you get as much dissolved as possible. Just uh, topping this up now. Um, so as I say, it was only 600 mil, just topping it up to the one liter mark, 1000 milliliters. And uh, a bit more stirring just to try and get um, as much of this uh, um, sediment that you can see floating around as dissolved as possible. And there we go. So I don't know if you can really tell. That is clear. It's just there's a couple of bits of uh, sediment in the bottom. So like I say, I just used a strainer to get rid of that. So time to decant it into its storage container. So I'm using a drinks bottle here, um, obviously not used for drinking. Um, please make sure you label everything and, and store it away safely. Um, but this takes one litre, so I shouldn't have any problems. Just using a funnel to avoid uh, splashing this anywhere. Storage life of this is probably about six months. Um, you store it at room temperature, but I'm just keeping it in a dark cupboard um, just to sort of uh, keep it away safe. Like I say, I'm labeled it as well just to make sure no one goes drinking it by accident. Uh, once it's all filled up, nice tight screw lid and it's ready to use. Just like before, I have my Patterson tank. Uh, whereas with 35mm film, I would have been able to use uh, two spools at a time um, with this kind of width. Because I'm developing 120 film, uh, it's much wider. I have to widen the spool uh, to this size, so I can only get, actually get one in my tank at a time. There are different size tanks, uh, but mine just takes either two 35 millimeters or um, one 120 at a time. Uh, it goes onto this spool once uh, once I've got the film wound on, and then that goes uh, into the tank, and obviously the the light proof lid will go on top. So, need to put all this into a bag and uh, get the film wound onto the spool. So there we go, we have our film loaded onto the spool uh, in the tank, all nice and light proof, uh, ready to uh, begin the developing process. So we're all ready to go, I'm just checking the temperature of the water, it's 22 degrees C. Um, it doesn't really matter, as long as it's over 20. Um, the reason I'm checking is that the um, development time needs to be uh, increased, sorry, decreased slightly if the water is warmer. Developer is slightly less, so I'll just run it under a warm tap just for a minute or so, just to bring it up to the same level. Gonna rinse out the film with just plain water to start with. This isn't strictly required, uh, I just prefer to do it. A couple of things, it'll just obviously rinse out any sort of particulates that might have built up on the film. Uh, but also it kind of brings the temperature of the tank up to uh, similar to the water and the developer and therefore obviously doesn't sort of uh, uh, alter the temperature one way or the other. Get the lid on and just give it a bit of a, a shake around just to try and uh, wash all the film off and then that can be drained back uh, away back into the jug. It often, uh, depending on the film, will discolour the water. Um, don't worry, don't be alarmed about that, that's quite normal. Um, as you can see with this, it's sort of given it a sort of almost dark bluish color. But like I say, that can be discarded then. And it's time to add the developer. Don't actually need a full liter um, for this particular one because I'm only doing it on one film. But obviously you can fill it up until you see the developer come to the top of the tank. Just put the lid on in case it spill it. And then we can uh, begin the development process. So I've got a timer running in the background there on the screen. A um, little bit of agitation, not as much as I would have done on the previous method that I showed you. Um, I'm developing for this for at least six minutes 
and if I agitate too much, uh, it reduces the development process and, and sort of brings on the fixing process instead. So just sort of minimal agitation, really. Once the six minutes are up, obviously we can then drain uh, the developer from the tank back into the bottle for reuse. The manufacturer says that this can be reused at least 11 times or 11 films. Um, not tested that. Uh, particularly, I don't know whether or not it can be stretched a little bit just by increasing the development times. They say to add, I think it's 15 seconds on to your development time for every subsequent film that you develop with this particular um, fluid. Um, and obviously that just helps maintain the fact that it's going to be losing some of its uh, integrity. Final wash then, I actually rinsed it a few times with water. Uh, just to get rid of all the lasting chemical and then we can open it up and take a look at the results just get to the uh, end of the film and there we go we have some images which is rather nice so all that remains now is to um, hang the film up to, to dry and once dried I can then trim it into smaller pieces ready for scanning and here's some results nice uh, strong contrast that I've got uh, and a good amount of grain all in all really happy with the fact that it's just £20 for at least 11 films if not more So there you go, that's Sinistil DF96. I hope that was of interest to you. I'm really impressed with the product to be honest with you um, saves money uh, still nice and simple to use, a lot less hassle in terms of having to, you know, uh, go through various stages or whatever else. It's just a one hit wonder. So, yeah, wholly recommend it. Um, I'm going on holiday in a week or so, um, but I'll try not to interrupt the uh, supply of videos. Really do appreciate all of your support as always. Thank you so much. I will uh, endeavour to, uh, you know, uh, keep uh, Turning out videos that uh, you enjoy. I um, have a Kofi link which I never remember to promote. So if you do fancy uh, buying me a coffee, just to sort of uh, as a you know way of showing me your support, I'd be really really grateful. There's a link in the description below. Other than that, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you again soon.